Okay. So, really, so, USA seeks to enter into a double taxation agreement with Ghana. USA has approached more tax consulting, a free market think tank whose aim is to liberalize the flow of capital between nation as nation states, for its advice regarding the best way of relieving double taxation between the two states. It is clear from the context of the consultation that USA intends to negotiate the DTA in order to enable its corporate sector to invest heavily in Ghana. Both USA and Ghana operate worldwide taxation regimes with classical mechanisms for taxing corporate profits and dividend income. They both have a flat corporate income tax rate, but Ghana has a higher rate for both corporate income and dividend income. In relation to their domestic rules on unilaterally resolving cross-border double taxation, both USA and Ghana grant ordinary foreign tax credits. However, USA exempt foreign source taxation on dividends where the shareholding constitutes a portfolio investment. The Partner for International Taxation at Tax Consulting at more task consulting has requested your advice on the best method of double taxation relief to include in the USA's DTA with Ghana, given USA's ambitions regarding any consideration of portfolio investment. Your advice is to be restricted to share ownership. You're also required to provide advice in relation to any practical difficulties that USA might encounter with adopting your recommended measures. Good. So, <clears throat> such questions can come, and um, I expect you to. And I give you the try question. Kindly try your best and see. So, if you've really gone through the the types of robotization that we have, then you should be able to answer this particular question. The credit method. You show us the advantages and disadvantages. The exemption method, paying particular attention to the fact that these are corporate institutions and they are coming in the form of share ownership, permanent establishment, and portfolio investors. Okay. So we went through the, the solution last time. We went through how we should solve it. And we told you that since <coughs> they are in for 
business, the focus should be on dividend tax. How are we going to tax dividend? If you tax it, I, which method of exemption are you going to give? Are you going to give the ordinary credit or the full credit? Okay. Um, I think I will share with you that this, what we discuss in order not to waste too much time. I will share with you what we discuss in an email form or, or in a page form. Then um, we'll proceed from there. But today we want to start another important topic. It is very important. So I will urge all of you to pay attention and read after afterwards and has to do with exchange of information, exchange of information, the concept of exchange of information. But before I proceed, do you, is there anyone who is lost from where we are? Because I always, I keep on saying that it is important that you know where we are so that you are not left behind. Um, we started by the introduction, looking at our local law, okay, our local act. We said that section one imposes the tax. Section two talks about chargeable income. And section three talks about what? Accessible income. And the accessible income, we were told that if you are a resident, the tax is on everything your worldwide income, but if you are non-resident, we tax you based on either your source income or your what? Your permanent establishment. So we went to section 101 of our local law. We look at who a resident is, who a non-resident person is. And our residents, we notice that there are four main persons. We have resident individuals, we have residents, companies, no, resident partnership first, resident trust, and then resident companies. These are what our local law says. Then we also look at who a permanent establishment is. We look at section 110. Now on the concept of residence, we notice that if we keep on maintaining our local law and think that we are in a world where there's no other country around us, what that suggests is that we are going to have issues. There's going to be conflict because each country is going to exercise its rights. In fact, today we have people who have dual residence. Okay, so if you are designing your tax laws and you don't take into consideration the global impact of your tax law, you are going to be left out. You are not an island. So therefore, we said that to deal with some of these conflicts, which normally comes in the form of jurisdictional overlap, okay? Because it is jurisdictional, they are territorial. Each country wants to exercise its own jurisdiction. In as much as um, South Sudan may be poor, they have their own jurisdiction within their country. So whereas they are exercising their jurisdictions over who a resident person is in order to enact their tax laws, there is likely to be jurisdictional overlaps. For example, if you have people who have dual resident, whereas you are pulling the person that you are my resident, then the other country is also pulling him on his on his right. And the fact that residence can be obtained not only within one country. And another interesting aspect is that the way tax people define residence is different from nationality. So one person can be resident of two countries. It is possible. And under that circumstance, what happens? How do we tax such a situation? Then we say that the only way we can do is to engage in double taxation treaty. Double tax treaty. Okay. So if it is a treaty, then what is then the meaning of a treaty? We look at the meaning of a tax treaty. We look at the benefits or the advantages or the objectives of going into a treaty at all. And the, the overriding objective is the fact that we want to avoid double taxation. Because whereas Ghana is saying that Goffred is a, 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 a resident, Goffred may also have some green card in the United States. 
So Godfrey will also be treated as a resident in the United States. In the end, if both of them are taxing Godfrey 60% on his income, you will notice that Godfrey will even be at loss because Ghana takes 60%. He will not even get 60% remaining to tax to, to pay in the United States. Then Godfrey will have to go and cough off additional 20% to add up to in order to be able to pay 60%, 60% here. That is not the ideal situation. It's, it's, it destroys investments, foreign investments. So the best we can do as a global community is to enter into a double taxation treaty. So we look at the objectives of double taxation treaty and we say that one of the objectives is to avoid double taxation. We also exchange information, if you remember very well. I hope that you remember very well. So um, I just want to go to that slide. We've done all these things. I'm just recapping so that you don't get lost where we are. Okay. One of the, the key objectives of entering into a, a double taxation treaty is the avoidance of double taxation, but also exchange of information. Just a minute. Eh? Good. Please, can you see my can you see my screen now? If you can if you can see my screen, let me hear from you. Godfrey, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Good. I can also so, see. Okay. So you see, we are on, on track, and I don't expect you to get lost. Okay. So we have done avoid double taxation. So today, if I ask you how do you avoid double taxation, you should be able to tell me the methods of relieving double taxation. You understand? Yeah. How do we prevent tax evasion? You should be able to tell me, you should be able to tell me something from all that we have learned. Okay? The determination of residence, allocation mm -hmm. of tax jurisdiction. You remember how to allocate tax jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. We even look at uh, um, sportsmen, Article 17, sportsmen and, and entertainers. If you are orchestra company, you are playing all around. We have a way of allocating the income so that the countries in which you have taught and you have brought the income, they, all, they will also have some, they will also have part of the money. If you, have, if you are in Black Stars and you go and play in uh, uh, Brazil, though you lost, they will get their money, but the tax on it, who gets it? You see, so we allocate, is it Brazil who must get it or is it Ghana who must get it or how do we share it? So the next, the most, another important thing is exchange of information. Have you seen it? That exchange of information. And it is that exchange of information that I want us to treat today. It's very important. Okay, it's so, so important. That exchange of information mostly features in the tax treaty because if it is not there, your, your tax system is weak. Your tax system will be considered as very weak. So all civilized countries will always have a provision of exchange of information in it. In fact, I have just run through quickly just to bring you to where we are. Then those of you who's, who, whose way seems to have been lost, you are not lost. So we've considered a lot of things in double taxation treaties. We've looked at the permanent establishment, which is a very key key topic. You can't go to the exams without knowing permanent establishment. The concept of residence. You cannot have any tax system without defining who a resident person is. No. All of these things will not come out unless you are an expert in taxation. So let me say those who are studying ICA and those who are doing the normal one, they will not know that this concept is what we have used to design our tax laws. So for him, he'll go into, um, you know, the Income Tax Act, he'll go and read section 101. Resident is blah, 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 blah. But he doesn't know why we have put it there. Okay. He will go to the uh, section 110. He will read permanent establishment, blah, 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 blah. He will not know why we have put it But you are an expert. He will go into uh, Section 112. He will go and read about a double tax, a foreign tax credit. He wouldn't know. Or he will and pick the, what do you call it, the income tax, the tax treaties that we have. He will pick the UK Ghana one. He will read about uh, Article 
the, the elimination of double taxation duty, he wouldn't know why we chose which method. Why did we choose the credit method instead of the full exemption? He wouldn't know. But you as an expert, if you are called upon, assuming that tomorrow I go and discover some island and I want it to be a country, and I say, okay, we also want to develop our taxes, and then we call you, come and help us design the most appropriate double taxation relief method. You should be able to be in the position to tell us and design it for us. Or tomorrow, if we invite you to go and give a talk on exchange of information, you should be able to give why the whole concept, why are we doing this? Is it helpful? Any question? So please, don't get lost. Whoever is lost, please let me know. Your, your your intro your intro has really really been helpful, pa. So thank you. I, you got I couldn't lost, start, eh? but is it? You got lost, eh? You know, I, I couldn't start from the onset. Okay. I wasn't right. with you from, but the, this morning the quick intro is really been helpful. So thank okay. you. All right. So we'll find time and then maybe as we go along, we'll pause and then recap. We'll pause and recap. We'll pause and recap so that you can. So today we want to look at exchange of information because it is a key component of our tax treaty. Okay. And here Ibrahim is going to be helpful for us because he does that report every time. Ibrahim, are you here? Ibrahim. Oh. As I'm here. I'm uh -huh. here. You have to say something. So when we get to the practicality, I will hand over to you, okay? Because you have been doing the report. Or <laughs> you and Francis, Mr. Tonto, or Francis Francois. <laughs> yes, sir. I yes. You've been doing it. Francois, you've been doing the exchange of information report for your company, or you've not done it before. No, 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 not for my company. Hey. But, but, but um, no, no, not in taxation, no, please. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I who do, else I works in the bank? Machine. I who else oh, works sorry, in the bank? I don't work bank? in the bank. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, then one of you works in the. Who, who, who is that? Is it Andrew? Andrew, you work in the bank, right? Or oh. Nah, nah, but the fact is. <laughs> hey. I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm missing someone. I knew we had two people, we had two bankers here who do exchange of information. Okay, no problem. So this, this, this is, it is, um, it's come to stay since 2015. We expect students to have a, a broader understanding of the concept. So it's been coming almost every time. So let's review quickly some questions. Last sitting, hey, was it? No, this is not August 2020. It was February 2020. Sorry, August there. Thank you, Paul. So, uh, <laughs> no, this one is a, a past question. I've sent it to you, even cry. I've sent it to you. And um, yes, it borders. Be. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's constant. Since 2016, all the time, the examiner intentionally brings questions on exchange of information because it is something that the global world thinks that that is the way to go. Look, we have a lot of Ghanaians who are very rich, but how do you get information? You see, even GRA has published the fact that if you're able to give information and it leads to discovery of tax liabilities, you are paid. Is it two point five percent of the of the penalties? So those of you who have secret information, uh, if you know of a company engaging in uh, illegality and they are dodging tax, just report it to GRE. GRE will go there. But you must have your facts. You must have your facts. Not just call and say, uh, I, "I'm suspecting this company." Then any the anchor which something. So. How how is the whistleblower protected? The whistle your your identity is completely hidden. They, you you don't you, they don't even know you, so you are dealing directly with GRA, and it wow. the information is well secured. Right, you have, you have, 
Oh, yeah, I know they know everything, but they are not. Uh, you know of a company? No, me, I've worked with GR in different angles. But I believe they know everything. If they are not acting, it's they, they themselves. Hey, I should. Charlie, sometimes they are handicapped. They are really handicapped. Sometimes I pity them, man. They are, they, they, they are handicapped. And, you know, in oh. Ghana, for me, we are too secretive and we don't have no, resources. To speak. Yes. Sometimes you go give the information before you realize the people have paid their way to, they have disclosed to give them the information. And for me, maybe I have wasted means to protect myself. I don't know about any other person. Mm. Oh, um, uh, our our good wish is to redeem mine. She says she's not well. That's why her voice is a bit low. But she has tried to join. So pr please, uh, yeah, buy her flowers and pray for her. And uh, and this are gonna fly. She wants money. I say fly. Who just spoke? I of money. Can we be best friends? I'm Fred. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> okay, we we'll talk after class. Eh? You just know so what. You know money, yeah. <laughs> okay, you. I hear you. All right. So let's look at February 2015. Question five. It says you are a tax official working in the Exchange of Information Unit of Ghana Revenue Authority. You have been asked to respond to several inquiries relating to the exchange of information with tax authorities in South Africa, Netherlands, Italy, and France. A request A, so um, that is A, a request came from South Africa of South African authority, which begins with an observation from the previous year's data that taxpayers in South Africa have often failed to disclose foreign source income. South Africa requests the names of all the shareholders in Company X operating from Ghana who are resident in South Africa and information on any dividends paid to them. Company X has a very popular brand in Ghana and has a large shareholders and has large shareholders. Please, this is not MTN, no, so please don't, don't let your mind start going around. So that is the first scenario. Scenario B. Mr. Johnson Walker, a resident of Netherlands. A resident of Netherlands. In the course of an ongoing tax investigation, it has been identified that Mr. Johnson Walker failed to declare his bank with Agricultural Development Bank in Ghana. Netherlands also suspect that accounts may have been opened in the name of Mr. Johnson Walker's daughter, Phyllis. Phyllis is the daughter. Phyllis is the daughter of the beneficial owner. Netherlands requests information on all accounts with Agriculture Development Bank held in both Mr. Johnson Walker and Miss Phyllis Walker's name. Miss Phyllis Walker's name. So this one too, you are you are required to do something on it. See, yesterday you reviewed a request for information from the revenue department from the revenue oh repetition from the revenue department of france the file however is back on your table today as it has been discovered that a loan application which is subject to forgive me these are all type of errors which is subjected to such exchange of information contains a secret trade formula d your junior colleague has just sent you an email asking you to differentiate between spontaneous exchange of information, exchange of information request and automatic exchange of information. He believes that information that has recently been obtained upon request from Italy could be of interest to South Africa tax authority. I assume that no exchange of information agreement exists between Italy and South Africa required what will be your response to each request state reasons for your response 20 marks this was so 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 an easy question to take so an easy question to take if you have read your exchange of information and you know the essence of 
exchange of information in international taxation is key. Those of you who have read about this Panama Papers, did you who 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 heard about the Panama Papers? Any 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 clue? What was contained in it? Who has, who has heard account. about the Panama Papers before? Oh, offshore accounts. Offshore accounts. Offshore accounts. And we have them in Ghana. Hmm? Dubai. People have invested heavily. And we know our rules in Ghana says that if you are a resident, we tax you on your worldwide income. So if you have made some profit over there, you declare it. But we have people who have offshore accounts. If they need anything, if they want to buy goods, they will import it. They want to buy dress, they will import it and pay from that account using credit card. I think the electronic system has also made tax evasion so easy. And that is why we are working or we are doing this exchange of information with the collaboration with in collaboration with the banks. Today, if you have money in your bank and you want to pay whatever money, you can use a debit card, Visa, or whichever. And the bank is not concerned about where you got the money from. As long as the money is in, is in that account, you can pay. If I have money in Dubai account and I want to buy goods from Dubai, I can buy it and bring it. So imagine... I have some employment income or I'm working in Ghana. Okay. I'm working for some company in Ghana. Or I'm work yeah, I'm working for some company in Ghana online. I do all my stuff. And then when it gets to payment, the money doesn't come here. The money is paid to my foreign bank account so in Dubai. Fifty thousand dollars every month. Do you think I will worry myself going pay PAY? Do you think no. I worry myself going to PAY? I won't. No. Yeah. Meanwhile, you, your fear, 1,500 Ghana cities, you are paying PAY. Mm -hmm. We are using it to subsidize uh, COVID-19 and providing security and everything. You are enjoying, you are enjoying part of it. You are, you are in Ghana doing everything. But I'm also working. All right. I'm using the subsidized electricity. And I get paid. Okay. I get paid. And I don't do anything that requires me to file my tax returns or whatever. So the whole point is, can we now enter into an exchange of information with Dubai? Such that Dubai will provide details of all people who have banking transaction with our bank and they report it to the GRA. So that is the essence because without that, without such information, we can't work. So if GRA has that information that oh, Redeemer has some nice bank account where she put all her income and does all her transactions, in that account, she receives on a monthly basis, $300,000. But in Ghana, she doesn't even have a 10. And at that circumstance, GRE will just go to her doorsteps and knock and say, we have identified that you have a huge offshore transaction. And as residents of Ghana, we don't see that in your income tax returns. So we want to find out why. Then there and there, the issue will come up. Mm -hmm. We can charge her for tax evasion or hiding that tax, and we can prosecute her and we'll recover the taxes from, from her. There was an issue in South Africa where one government official paid some big money to a side check. When the money got into the side check's account, the South African authorities started asking her where the money was coming from. And the whole thing erupted. And they had to investigate and they noticed that 
there was some income that the man had not been paying taxes on. So exchange of information is very key. But what information do we exchange? Okay. Good. Let's look at last September, um, August 20, 2019 to how they ask the question. Question five, August 2019. Um, the common reporting standard. Yes. We will, we will come and look at the questions. So I'm just. Read, we, we will come and treat okay. them fully. Uh -huh. But who okay. was asking the question? I, I, I was going to ask. My, I lost uh, the link and I had to come back. So I thought you had treated that already. No, 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 no. We are now. We are going to treat the full okay. topic, but like I do every time, I'll put the questions there for you so that whilst you are learning, you 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 make your mind that you are learning to answer questions. Then after uh -oh. we have finished, then you go back and answer those questions. I believe that you've done that one for the Article 23 A and B, the one I yes, post. I showed the, uh -huh. uh, yes. the past. They are all past questions, and so you just go to the solution and then read how it was answered. Okay, please read them. They are now repeat questions. Read them. The most painful thing is that you have a past question that has been repeated, and you can't do it. Mm -hmm. So, in as much as we are learning the concept to go and open our law, our law firms and task consulting firms, you have to also put your mind to the fact that you have to pass first before you get the, pra the practicing certificate to go and practice. And some of you must start now. Mm -hmm. Start now and practice illegally so that when you finish, your firm might have grown by then. Okay. So August 2019, today asked a question on it. They said the common reporting standard is the global standard for the automatic exchange of financial account information for tax purposes. It is designed to maximize efficiency and minimize costs to tax administrations and financial institutions. In Ghana, the common reporting standard is operated under the standard for exchange, standard for automatic exchange of financial account information act, act 2000, act 967 to 2018. Describe in detail the institutions that have reporting obligations in Ghana. When this question came, a lot of people were crying that, eh, why should the why should the examiner go and uh, ask such a question? Blah blah blah. A whole lot of them. So this particular year, a lot of people failed because they had not tuned their mind to this act. So under the, uh -huh, so, so questions like this, Ibrahim will, will help us because they are they have the obligations to deal with exchange of information. So Ibrahim, take note of when we get there, you help us. If you help us and you go to exam so and it comes, you are you are free. <laughs> Good. The same year, February to the Oxford asked another question. They said, write short notes on the following. Country by country reporting, we'll do it in transfer price and not now. But the B, how all of you can see my screen? Or well, I'm talking into the air. Oh, no, we are watching. Okay. We are watching. Okay. B says types of exchange of information for tax purposes. I type in errors like that. So types of exchange of information for tax purposes. And this one, 10 marks each. So even if you can't answer the A part, you answer the B part, then you are gone. Okay. It didn't end there. August 2018. So you see, it is consecutive. Question four. It says, the extent of bearer shares regime and bearer bank accounts in some jurisdictions threaten the standard on exchange of information for tax purposes. Required. To what extent do you, to what extent do bearer shares and bearer bank accounts affect the standard on exchange of information for tax purposes? Nine max. What are the advantages and disadvantages of bearer shares to a person? So when we get there, we'll learn, we'll read all of this. Is. Okay. That was August 2018. Then in the same year, February 2018, we also asked another question. 
the standard for exchange of information for tax purposes on is universally adopted and incorporates and incorporated in the United Nations model convention required. What is the standard for exchange of information for tax purposes? We didn't end there. In 2016, we also asked a question. As okay. I said, the UN convention is the same as the OECD. In yes. Convention. Yes. Okay. They are all the same. You know, the UN one which was is just a reflection. And like I explained to you, anytime you are, some of you, I, I hope all of you have the OECD convention. If you are reading it, the attention is on developed countries. I told you that we have three models at the beginning of the lecture for double taxation. I told you we have th we have three models. We have the OECD. We have the UN model, and then we have the US model. As for US, they always want to, you know, stand. The popular ones are this three, but among them, it is the OECD one, which is the most popular. The UN one is for developing, is between developed countries and developing countries. Okay, and this is what the UN recommends for us. But you know, we have a taste for foreign goods and quality things. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our treaties, Ghana treaties, all of them are a reflection of what? The OECD one. The UN one is just a copy of the OECD one. But where the, 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 the content, here it is two big guys playing by size. UK, France. They are, they are big guys, okay, developed countries. So they can maintain some terms and they are fine. Okay, the UN one is saying that no, take into consideration the developing country that you are entering into a treaty with and make it in such a way that it favors them so that they will also develop. Okay. But the question that somebody will say is if you have two templates and one is for developed and one is for developing, why don't you go for the developed one and strive to be like them? Alternatively to all the countries that we have signed a treaty with, the majority of them are the OECD members. UK, France, uh, uh, Belgium, Italy. You see, they are all from OECD. And so normally, it would be difficult. It's like they even come with their template. We said, this is what we want. So at the negotiation stage, they are more inclined to the OECD one. And we too, because we, that thing has sticked in our head, when we are even developing with our African country brothers, we still use the OECD one. So you look at the Ghana, uh, Ghana, Mauritius is in Africa, isn't it? Hello? Yes. 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 Mauritius, South Africa. Yes, Mauritius, South Africa, Morocco. It's just the same just adopted the OECD version. So technically they are the same, they are not different. So I just wanted to explain to you um, any question? Oh, I've not got into a question yet. Okay. So this was August 20, 2016, it says Ghana has a, Ghana as a member of the Global Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes has undergone the Phase 2 peer review. The Phase 2 <coughs> review assigned Ghana ratings for each of the 10 essential elements of the standards of transparency and exchange of information. The ratings were based on the progress made by Ghana in addressing the determination and recommendation made in the phase one review report and the effectiveness of exchange of information in practice. Ghana 
was given an overall rating of largely compliant based on the ratings of the 10 elements. The overall rating of largely compliant places Ghana among countries like Brazil, Germany, Hong Kong, United Kingdom, and United States in terms of tax transparency and exchange of information for tax purposes required list the 10 essential elements of the standards of transparency and exchange of information. Of course, those who wrote in 2016 may have some difficulties because sometimes students may not tune their mind to some of these new things. And that is why I sent you some articles to read on the taxation of the digital economy. So if you see a question on taxation of the digital economy, please, it is not new. And don't say it is out of syllable question. They are the latest things that are being discussed. How do we tax the digital economy? There was some article I shared with you that talks about what Turkey, uh, Israel, uh, India, and all those things, what they are doing. I hope you've gone through them yeah. or not yet. Most, I, I expect not yet from the majority. Them. Uh, are you sure? I think we, we went through them. Some of them have uh, they are different methods that the uh, these countries were adopting. Um, uh, so I think we've read them. It was okay. a few pages. So we read that's the page nine to thirteen or so. The one you gave us exactly page it, nine to that thirteen. One. Mm -hmm, that one. So I wanted you to look at that one and then. So if you go and you okay. are supposed to. So from Francis, uh, put yeah. the emphasis on New York and then and then and the likelihood that it will suffer. With that write-up that you did mm -hmm. on that one, um, you did not discuss with us. You did not discuss how Ghana um, uh, is doing this. You gave example of how countries were doing this. Ghana, so Ghana, I, okay. I didn't see and any, I think it, any conclusion in that. You needed to come back a little because okay. I only limited you to page nine from page nine. Okay. okay, so you needed now come back to page seven. Okay. okay, and then how, so over there, I talk about the current considerations where Ghana, we have our VAT law, section 16, the VAT law makes provision, but I was very silent on the fact that we don't have income tax provisions. We don't have them. Because if you look at our current permanent establishment rules that we discuss under Article 5, you wouldn't find any specific rule. And even all the past questions that you've gone through, you notice that permanent establishment, if the, the actual activity doesn't happen in Ghana, it will be difficult for GRA to tax them. Mm -hmm. now, so in case a question comes and they ask you, how is Italy doing in order to tax web-based transactions? Okay. So they introduce a levy at 3% for all digital transactions. Anytime you do a digital transaction, there's a 3% levy. Taiwan also did the same thing in the form of the AVAT. Thailand, they also have the Turkey, they also have one. Okay, France, YouTube tax. India, 6% equal equalization levy. Okay, so in Africa, we needed to do something. It is only Uganda. Who did social media tax where people were paying 0 0.05 dollars per day if you don't pay it the network operator will block you so if you were roaming if you are using vodafone they will block you from getting access to facebook or getting access to whatsapp they use what we call the internet protocol ip address so the whole of vodafone's network may be um, Facebook IP address will be blocked. So you can't log on. And so if the country wants to do that, then they can do that. But what will be the political implications? Hey, MPP4, this time put here, they said we shouldn't, we, shouldn't, we, sh we shouldn't say hi without paying tax. So there's a political angle there which the government wouldn't want to do because of voting, po voting powers. Okay, because in Uganda, when that thing happened, the government was so unpopular. If you go to Dubai, you can't make WhatsApp calls from Dubai because they want you to use the voice call, then they will get money. You use credit, then they will get money. So if you if you are there, you can't make calls from on WhatsApp. If you are within, 
to buy, yes, that one you can make a WhatsApp call. But you can't cross their territory. It means that they have asked all the internet providers to block any voice call that is originating or, or terminating in their country. These are things that are ongoing. So if you meet it in the exams, we expect that as a, as a professional tax consultant, you should be able to express your view and make some suggestions. So a typical question like this is what happened in 2016, where it is it was a current thing being discussed. Okay, the global exchange of information was ongoing. Ghana was now in the faces. And then all of a sudden, they asked students to ask their questions on it. So please, you need to start reading the exchange of information on this particular area. Okay. Let's look at the exchange of information. And we are going to look at Article 26 of the OECD Model Tax Convention. Article 26 of the OECD Model Tax Convention. As usual, let us make it look very simple. How many pages do we have? Who can tell us? Hello? Literally one page. Come again. Literally one page. Ah, Charlie, you see one page there. Even if I give you five minutes, you can even finish reading it. No reason. But what about the commentary? How many pages? Hey, are people with us? Hello? 20 pages. 20 pages? Yeah. OK. About 20 pages. So do we promise ourselves that today, tomorrow, and the holiday, we'll finish it? I have shown you the trend of the past question. Yeah. OK. The notes. The note itself is in the commentary. Like you said, the actual write-up just have five paragraphs. Okay, in the in the commentary, but the note is in the sorry, the actual this thing is just one page, <coughs> basically <coughs> five paragraphs, which you can read within five minutes. Okay, one page, but the commentary is where I want you to use today, tomorrow, and then 26th, 25th, which is a holiday. Apart from Ibrahim, Ibrahim, even after, after Salah, you can come back and read. Oh, Ibrahim. OK, please don't rely on Ibrahim. He has, been do he has read it already. He does, he does the practical aspect, so please. Let's leave him out. Though he's a any any other Muslim brother on the page. Aha, uh -huh, Swala. Swala too. So please, after mosque, read it for us. Agreed. Hello. Yeah. Hey, okay, sir. Shall. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you read it, you'll get a question from here because you can look at the trend. The reason is that students have still not grasped that area. And anytime you review the scripts, there are loopholes. The only way you can make students appreciate is to keep repeating it, then to force them to go and read. So Article 26 is very important. Today, we will not go through the articles, you know, it will take quite a longer time. And I don't want us to go beyond the term because last week we didn't meet for oil and gas. Okay. So what I'm going to do, yes. Locally, why is MTN refusing to share information with uh, Kelly GBG? Uh, they want your call details. Will you, will you prefer it? Is it not for financial or tax purposes? 
Yeah, but will you prefer your call details? We don't want to share the IDs for so you can you can get the I can, well, I don't know about the facts. I don't know whether they are requesting for it, but my view is that as a tax person, my view is that I don't need your identity to to know and assess taxes because they are systems. Okay, and the system records how much you have. Why do I need to know your location and also your ID, the person you send the money to, who received it at what time? Why, why, sh why should I do that? I mean, won't, you, won't it be invasion of your privacy? And even if it, if it is, don't you think I need your consent to do that? The lawyers will tell you. Don't you think, why should I, tell, uh, why should I disclose your core detail records with someone without your consent? Will you be fine? Rajere goes into people's bank accounts and takes their details without their consent. Okay, so my question: This is, this is, this is not your, this is not people's bank accounts. It's about people's conversation. Okay, so do you remember? Do you remember Amidu and uh, Jerry? Do you remember Amidu? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yes. And do you know, did you see the bruhaha that surrounded it? Yes, about Ayariga. Yes, Ayariga. This is about people's conversation. It is not about any financial information. So I will be, I will, I will wish that, you know what, your phone number, we should block maybe two or three of them. Yeah. So that it doesn't identify you. And it doesn't even show where you are located. If I get to know that, hey, um, Raymond, you have been staying on, on, the, on the phone with this, your girlfriend, for three hours every day. If your wife gets to know this, what will happen to your marriage? <laughs> it will affect the marriage. <laughs> exactly. And the Constitution has strict provisions regarding this. Okay. So you have to be careful. So if... I don't know what they are requesting. I'm not. I'm not into those discussions. But I'm just. Hey, yesterday, I read an article. They said they were requesting for mobile money details. Okay. Then, so if you are looking for mobile money details, no problem. It's available. But what type of details do you want? Okay. I give your details. Then your wife gets to know. Hey, you. You have been giving me fifty CDs a week. Look at this. Your girlfriend. Look at the man, amount of money you've been sending to. Look. This is a number. Then your. Your wife picks that thing and call the girl. Then the girl also confirms that yes, and Raymond, I'm 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 Raymond's side chick. She he, he has been sending me 500 CDs every week. So it depends on the details that is being looked for. Okay, if the details is just about the transaction without the identity and the location of the people, why not? Why what what is wrong? What is wrong with that? It should be given. But I've seen a situation where there was a banter where we said, okay, look, we're not going to give you the IDs of the people because you don't need you don't need the number to do the assessment. Do, do you need a number, Raymond? Do you need a number? Jerry might need a number, but I don't know about Kelly Why why do you, why okay? So let's talk as tax tax professionals. Why do you think they need a number? For what? GRA will need so that he knows the person's transactions and they can tax the person directly. Just as they okay, do so with the bank accounts. Oh, that's what they do, and you think that they don't give, they don't, give, they don't need the consent of the other people. Oh look, even I think per the RAE, I'm not sure about the specific place, but they can go into, they can request information from the banks on all their clients, and then go after them their their taxes. Exactly. Is, so now you are looking for, you are now going to tax the people, and in the Data Protection Act, too, you should. So the whole thing is okay. We are, we hear you. So the techos blast a text message to the people and say that okay, can you need the details? Why wouldn't you agree to this? If you think that what you are going to use the term for is legally, why wouldn't you agree? Okay. Huh? <laughs> I just wanted clarity on why the yeah, I hear you, but my 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 beef is that look, mm. if you want the subscribers numbers no problem they are not for me let me just send a text message that henceforth your details has been given to jerry so that nobody come and sue me in court 
you remember recently there was somebody, there was a, another executive instrument where they said the president was entitled to everything uh, about telecom and blah, blah, blah. And then some people started filing suit in court. Did you see that thing going around in, on WhatsApp where somebody sued all the telcos? I don't know where that, that thing has been determined. So when it comes to privacy of people, and especially now that people are using phone numbers to clone people, look, my phone number is linked to my bank account. My phone, and people, look, even mobile money, look at what is happening. People can, they can clone you today, today, today. They will, they will use their phone numbers and everything and clone. They can even look at your transaction, your history, and clone you. And they will take everything that belongs to you and they will take it away. Okay. So let's be careful what we, yes, we agree. But if you're asking for, if I was a taxman or if, if I was GRE, I won't be interested in the phone numbers. Okay. Or unless they come specifically and say that, you know what? We are investigating number A, B, C, D. So this is a court order. Give us a court order for us to investigate these people. That, that is different. Okay. It is different from you going to collect 20 something million subscribers and said, this is it. If I, what about if I'm there and you send me unsolicited text messages? Do you know it's a nuisance? Aremo. Are you there? Have, have you been receiving those text messages from those uh, microfinance and all those people? Have you been receiving? Or unsolicited message, Raymond? Have you received yes, some before? I've have. Have been. Some of them. Is it, is it annoying? Very annoying, sir. <laughs> and NCA even says that if you receive those things, you should report the telco to them. You know there's something like that. NCA yeah. has been finding telcos that these yeah. are unsolicited text messages. What about if I give that thing to Kelly and then they also go and sell it to these microfinance people? And it is a huge asset. So me, sometimes even when I go to some people's office and they, you, so, you know, when you are entering, then they will say, fill your name and then your number. Your number, yes. Be careful. Just be careful. Criminals are using it everywhere. And especially in Ghana, where we don't know the people, identity is a problem. You write your phone number, tomorrow you are there, you receive some text message, you think that where they have been selling all these things. To what somebody will call you now, and eh, your son is sick, eh, and uh, we want you to try your those those stories. You think is I go and look at go and ask the, the, the MTN people and the Vodafone on a daily basis, people who have been swindled on mobile money. You see, so let's let's be careful what we want and then how we or what is the best way we can handle it if we think that we really want to not just come giddy 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 and say, okay, no, I'm coming to exercise my power. Look, you are going to have so many political matters and you are not ready to deal with it. Anyway, where were we? Even lost. But please oh, yeah, that that's that's to me. That's why that article to me and let's let's be frank let's be frank we are all tax people and currently gvg is to do taxation okay i'm sure you'll do it in tax audit telecom taxation yeah we need to analyze exactly what the model works this is my view currently gvg says they want to monitor real-time transactions okay in Ghana, we don't pay taxes on real time. That is a fact. The VAT law and the CST Act does not charge on talk. It is not a talk time, a talk tax. So I will recharge 100 CDs. When I recharge 100 CDs, the tax is paid at the time I bought the credit. So imagine I have bought 500 cities, and I have not recharged everything. GRE has collected the tax a long time ago. It will take me several days before I finish or before I talk. So are you telling me that how can 
Kelney monitor the sales I bought on the street when I was driving at the time the tax has been paid up to the time when I will talk for the talk to record on Kelly GVG. How is it? Are you going to use magic to do this? How, how is it possible? Yet a lot of people misunderstood this thing. So there's always a huge timing difference. Imagine data. I bought data for my table net. I bought 200 cities. I bought it in October last year. I am still using it. When I bought it in October, I have paid a tax in October. But it will never reflect on Kennedy GVG or MTN record until I have used it to watch video. In other words, they account for taxes on usage base. So until I talk, it will never show that some transaction has taken place. So something that I paid a tax in October, and I've been talking small, 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 small. How are you going to reconcile the two transactions? It is impossible unless you use some magic. And that is what is going on now. So can it would think that, yes, they need some information from the telcos and it's not forthcoming. My brother, it may be for other purposes, but certainly not for tax purposes. Tax purposes, okay. Certainly. You can't tell me as a tax expert that the, the laws are completely different. Unless we go back to parliament and change our laws and say that, you know what, when you sell the airtime, don't collect taxes. And that is what they try to do when Esla also just jumped in mm -hmm. and started imposing. So, you know, if you recharge 500 cities, they will, they will take the tax. Then they credit your account with what? 400 cities. Well, at that point, at that point, Kelly could monitor it. But that is going to make the government look so unpopular. Well, yeah. So everybody, hey, the government, I mean, 500, remember my 400, then they will show the difference is tax. Everybody is now going to see. Corrupt officials will now know that the people are seeing it. And the Ministry of Communication will not allow you to do that. So it is only the non tax expert who thinks that something is going on. But if you're a tax expert and you understand the laws, I do not expect anybody to wage into that argument. They are completely different things. Completely, completely different things. Why do you need mobile money transactions for? For what? <laughs> no, what do you need the mobile numbers for? What, what are you going to use it for? Are you going to call the people or what? So we have issues. We have our tax system in Ghana is both politically and a whole lot of them. Maybe one day, one day, things will straighten up. Okay. All right. So that is it. You deal, you treat telecommunication tax in audit. If you don't treat it, I'll find time and come and explain to you the basis because it can come. It is part of the indirect taxes that you are supposed to treat. So Article 26, let's just read the article, not the commentary. Let's read the article. Ibrahim will do a summary for us because I trust him. He's been doing the actual work. So Ibrahim will do a summary of the Article 26 of the commentary. Then he will share with us. Ibrahim, you heard me. I think I, I, will, I will take that tax. Good. But good, what good. I've been doing is a practice. Well, I'm now learning why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> That is good. So when you read the commentary, you see, hey, say Adia me, you know, is that how it is? So we will be glad then you share your experience with us. I have not, I have not filled that report before, but I know the the theory and how it works. So let's go to Article Twenty Six. Who will read for us? Just the article, not the commentary. Who do the reading for us? I can read. Okay. Paragraph 1. The competent mm -hmm. authorities of the contracting states shall exchange such, such information as is foreseeably relevant for carrying out the provisions of this convention or to the administration or enforcement of the domestic laws concerning taxes of every kind and description 
imposed on behalf of the contracting states or of their political subdivisions or local authorities, insofar as the taxation thereunder is not contrary to the convention. Please the underline the word underline the word foreseeably relevant. It is not every information that you can come for. And if you read a commentary, you will see foreseeably relevant. Foreseeably relevant for carrying out what? The work okay. Okay. of taxation. Okay, continue. The action of information is not restricted by Article 1 and 2. No, it's Paragraph 2. Any information received under Paragraph 1 by a contracting state shall be treated as secret in the same manner as information obtained under the domestic tax laws, under the domestic laws of that state, and shall be disclosed only to persons or authorities, including courts and ad administrative bodies, concerned with the assessment or collection of the enforcement or prosecution in respect of the determination of appeals in relation to the taxes referred to in paragraph one or the oversight of the above. Mm -hmm. Such persons or authorities shall use the information only for such purposes. They may disclose the information in public court proceedings or in judicial decisions. No judicial judicial mm -hmm. decisions. Okay. Notwithstanding the foregoing Information received by contracting states may be used for other purposes when such information may be used for such other purposes under the laws of both states and the competent authority of the supplying states authorizes such use. Three, in no case shall the provisions of paragraph one and two be construed so as to impose on a contracting state the obligation a, to carry out administrative measures as at variance with the laws and administrative practice of that or of the other contracting states. B, to supply information which is not obtainable under the laws or in the normal course of the administration of that or of the other contracting states. And C, to supply information which would disclose any trade business, industrial, commercial, or professional secrets, or trade process, or information, the disclosure of which would be contrary to public policy. Three is very, very important, guys. Three is very, and when we read the last sitting question, there was one of the scenario questions which said that the information contained a trade formula. Did you see it? Yes. Question cry was that the last sitting question, February. February question three. I think question three. Or oh, it's not question three, no question three. Question five. One of them. Aha. Uh -huh. C. Look at the C. He said yesterday you reviewed a request for information from the revenue department from the from France. The file, however, is back on your table today as it has been discovered that a loan application which is subject to such exchange of information contains a trade, a secret trade formula. So you see, we want you to apply your knowledge in the exchange of information. So under this one, the question is, are you obliged? Mm -hmm. You see, but paragraph three is telling you that under no circumstance shall the provisions of one and two be construed as to impose obligations. In other words, you don't owe any obligations. That involves a disclosure of trade formulas. A to to supply um, information which would disclose any trade. No, that is not right. Guys, give me two, give me one minute. Eh? Um, let me set up the other class for the professional people. I'll join you in uh, two minutes. Okay.
continue. So, um, we are finished with three. Let's read four. Four. If information is requested by a contracting state in accordance with this article, the other contracting state shall use its information gathering measures to obtain the requested information, even though that other state may not need such information for its own tax purposes. The obligation contained in the, pre in the preceding sentence is subject to the limitation of paragraph 3, but in no case shall such a such limitation be construed to permit a contracting state to decline to supply information solely because it has no domestic interest in such information. Okay. Five. Five. In no case shall the provisions of paragraph three be construed to permit a contracting state to decline to supply information solely because the information is held by a bank, other financial institution, nominee or person acting on agency or or a fiduciary capacity, or because it relates to ownership interest in a person. Mm -hmm. So this is the provision. That's where the banks come in. You see, when you are dealing with such a secret information, you need a law that backs it. So we are going to, aside what I've, aside the main treaty. We are going to make reference to the Exchange of Information Act. I shared it on the page. The Exchange of Information Act. It's a lot. We are not supposed to read everything. Okay. Can you see? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the Automatic Exchange of Information Act. Ibrahim is very familiar with this act. So he will be of help to us. Now, if you want to have a question fully answered, please just come through this one, this law. OK, so we have the purpose, the application, designation of competent authority. This law was passed in 2018, OK? And um, it says, whereas as a result of the world becoming increasingly global and therefore making it easier for all taxpayers to make, hold, and manage investment through financial institutions outside of their country of residence. So you see why financial institutions are very important. Because you cannot have a bank account without financial institution. And that's why they have the, the, the largest obligation to, to help us enforce this law. Then it says, whereas vast amounts of money are kept offshore, and go on tax to the extent that taxpayers fail to comply with tax obligations in their home jurisdiction. Whereas offshore tax evasion is a serious problem for jurisdictions all over the world, small and large and developed and developing countries have a shared interest in maintaining the integrity of their tax systems. Whereas cooperation between tax administrations is critical in the fight against tax evasion and in protecting the integrity of tax systems and a key aspect of the of that cooperation is exchange of information. Whereas, as part of the global effort in combating offshore tax evasion and improving transparency and exchange of information, the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, of which Ghana is a member, has agreed to develop a new global standard for exchange of tax information. Whereas, the new global standard has led to the development of the model of automatic exchange of financial account information referred to as the common reporting standards, allowing for jurisdictions to automatically exchange financial account information with their exchange partners. And whereas Ghana, in fulfillment of its international obligations as a member of the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, is signatory to the multilateral competent authority agreement known as the MCAA, which requires it to automatically exchange financial account information from the year 2018. Now, wherefore, an enactment to implement the common reporting standard approved by the Council of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that's OECD, on 15th July 2014, to designate the Commissioner General as a competent authority to ensure an improved 
international tax compliance by imposing on financial institutions an obligation to report financial reporting set certain financial accounts of an individual or an entity to the Ghana Revenue Authority to require the conduct of due diligence with respect to financial accounts and for related matters. So have you seen the context in which we are preparing this law? It is more, it is a huge global Panaman invoked law. So that is the context in which we have this law. And the financial institutions are going to play a very key role in it. It affects Ghana, it affects everybody. So in as much as we have it in our tax treaty, because of our affiliation with the Global Transparency Forum, we needed to enact a law so that you will not say, say um, this, is, this is that or this or that. Okay. The purpose of this act, Act 967, is to implement the common reporting standard to ensure and improve international tax compliance by imposing on financial institutions an obligation. So have you seen it? It is financial institutions who are obligated to report to the Ghana Revenue Authority information regarding certain financial accounts of an individual or an entity, conduct due diligence with respect to the accounts referred to in A, so that GRA will implement it in their tax systems. Okay. The act applies where the Republic of Ghana is a party to the competent authority agreement set forth in the first schedule or an agreement in similar terms to the ag agreement referred to A. GRA under Section 3 has been designated as what? The competent authority to deal with. But what is the reporting obligation? These are the things that I want you to look at very well. Each reporting financial institution shall submit to the competent authority annually a report that provides information with respect to each reportable account maintained by that financial institution. We'll, we'll have to come and look at what is reportable account. So, in fact, um, I don't intend to go through this one. I'll leave it for Ibrahim to take us through this section. Okay. Because he is with financial institutions. He's learning it. And um, he will be a very good person to help us. So, you talk about due diligence procedure. Okay. An account is a reportable account from the date the account is opened. Mm -hmm. Or and is, is identified as a reportable account. Modification to due diligence. So please, uh, I don't intend you to, it's a lot, 212 pages, but I don't, I, I want you to just flip through and look at what is happening. You cry about it, by now cry, your, your account has been reported, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. Those of you who have offshore accounts, be careful. Okay. So we will deal with it. It's not. It's not enough. Uh, I mean, what what is expected of you? It's not too much. Then we have the first schedule. It's the first schedule, which which is a lot. So technically, look at from session one to page one to seventeen. Then the other one, the agreement. It's what this is the multilateral agreement. Eh? It's like a, the convention. And um, over here, you're not supposed to read much because it's technically designed by the OECD. So it's almost the same. Please, are we all on the same page? Hello. Hi, everyone. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the main act is not enough. It is a treaty that attached to it, which is a little distance. So just flip through and look at it. And if you read the commentary, you will notice that it's the same as, or virtually the same as what, what is here. Mm. So I take it that Ibrahim will come and just do a, a small distance. We'll give him the opportunity to do that for us because he's practicing it. And then... Um, Yeah, technically, that is it. Non-reporting financial information in all these things. So I've shared it on the page. Please read it because of the way the examiner keeps asking questions on this on this uh, reporting, reporting. 
most of them you don't need them. What is reportable account and others? They have already defined in the listing the treaty attached to it. You don't need, but at least be familiar with the the sections. Okay. So let me take you through the role of exchange of information. Can you see my screen again? Yeah. OK. Why do you think we need to exchange information with other people? Number one, it ensures the correct applications of our laws. If we are saying that, Nicholas, if you make money from outside, we need to tax you under Section 3, your global level. We have to be sure that we are using the Section 3 properly. So if we exchange information and you have been receiving money from outside and you don't tell us, we will know. I'm sure very soon. There's another, there's one institution that operates that I don't understand. Uh, MoneyGram. I don't know how they operate. So maybe Ibrahim, you share your views with us. MoneyGram. You know, MoneyGram, people send money to their people, their friends, get friends and all that. Do they tax it? Or does GRA, is GRA interested in taxing those money or trying to find out what sort of income is it? Who has any idea? Ibrahim? MoneyGram, how does it work? And again, mobile money too. We have to also come and talk about it. If you are sending money, how would I know it is for salaries? Or how do you know it's for goods and services? And I, I'm sure that is why Kenny GVG wants the mobile money data. But they should come clear and say, yes, we want to tax Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Raymond, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> uh -huh. So they should come clear and say it. But they should not let it be like we want to assess the telcos. No, as for the telcos, you can't assess them. They are already they are, they are already there. If you want to go and tax Ghanaians, then you say, okay, telcos, give me the mobile money transactions of all Ghanaians. I want to see who has collected money and he has not paid tax. But By me, to be difficult. Come again. Can they do that on the quiet? Why would they do? Hey! Because Ghanaians are already doing tax. So if they are requesting for information to tax Ghanaians, and you are insisting they tell Ghanaian so that they will look unpopular. No, but Raymond, yeah. Raymond, if, yeah. if I give your financial data to them and then you are there known, then uh, BNI people will come and say, we have seen that you have been transferring plenty money. We want to know what and what is it. Won't you require, where did they get the information from? Yes, oh. I, but since the law, if the law permits them to get that information, and the I'm law. Not, I think... Yeah. Yeah. Then let me tell the subscriber because me, I wouldn't you need, know. You need my consent. Um, someone like me, I'm still gonna come after uh, empty and they won't <laughs> have any money left. You do it. Yeah, I know you do it. <laughs> hey, the lawyers say, I swear, the lawyers say, the constitution, they, they don't joke with it though. Yeah, hey, the yeah. kind of the, the kind of course you will get. We'll, the man we'll not the lawyer, the one who sued Vodafone, just because of that law. Yes. They will see you. The whole thing will be too bizarre. You won't even want to go there. What about if I collected it and I just transferred it for people? Then BNI will come and knock uh, invasion of my privacy. That alone, the lawyers will argue that I've invaded his privacy. He needs damages. He was sleeping at dawn and you disturb. He will cause, they have something they call emotional something something trauma and they will they want to value this one so that they will get some compensation from it litigants yeah. also the yes, thing that bible says that, that, that is why i went to school <laughs> <It's> <laughs> but has, has, there, has there ever been a compensation for bni acting in such a way before well if some some of the lawyers that they get to they can pursue the case to supreme court you know, the court is where they normally sit. That is, is like their room. So something small, no, they think there's an opportunity. No, they want to take advantage. It's like you have seen a business opportunity and you want to invest. That's what they do. And sometimes if you get some judge via, oh, master, 
or best slap you see ya. One to your pet, or back at your contempt, they will take you to prison. And you go and join them, someone space crane you. My friend says, you know, now because of the issue of separation of powers, the executive is kind of portrayed um, sending his hand into the judicial arena. In fact, they actually do. So, um, even in some cases, when it goes to court, there's some political influence over it before you even oh, get yeah. judgment. It's taken about 50 years or, or more. Yeah. So, you would want to just give up. Yeah, get him. Okay, so. Another reason is to counter tax avoidance and evasion, and it is one of the major reasons. So if you look at all our tax treaties, which I believe all of you have, around 20, section 20, article 28, 25, some of them are 25, some of them are 28, some of them are 27, you see exchange of information article in there. And then also OECD, as for them, they, they will always push. So this law, this global tax forum, Transparency Forum. It was it's by OECD. And even look at the preamble of the they are they are seeking to improve international transparency. That is what they do. Okay. So how do we ensure exchange of information? So we can do bilateral treaty, which we have in our treaty. Okay. Can some I don't have my treaties here. Can somebody check Ghana UK tax treaty? Which article this with? exchange of information. So that is bilateral between two countries. Okay. And then we also have the multilateral on the UN, the, 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 the UN and the UK model. That is what we have used. Okay. Multilateral one. The one that we have attached to the act. You can see that Ghana has signed and Ghana is a member. So you can have that one. Or you can have the... 28. Uh, 28. And it runs through all all the treaties. So read that one too. Read it and see whether the, the wording is the same as the one we have in the OECD models. Okay. Uh -huh. So we can do it bilateral or multilateral or any other mechanism. So the one that you are seeing under 28 is Ghana, UK. How they want to deal with what? The exchange of information. It doesn't extend to any other country. But under the Global Tax Forum, the one that we have with there. Automatic is a multilateral one. I'm sure we have a lot of countries under it. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So we also have some other conventions that criminalizes it. Okay. Letters of request. It can be letters of domestic laws in which we will deal with um, the criminality of, of, of it. So Article 26, like I've mentioned, we have read the 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 content please let's finish reading the let's finish the the main um commentary okay the commentary you see right now when if i were you i'll start marking my questions we've seen that article four is a, a popular question article five is a popular question article 26 is now getting to a pop is also getting a popular question or is getting popularity Article 27, Article 17 is a, a little standard. Francis. Yes. The, the slide you are reading from, have you shared it with us? Yes. Is it today? Long time. Long, 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 time. long, long Okay. Long long time. Okay. <laughs> then let's go on. I'll share it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the main com the main element of article, this thing is that it is with transparency. Okay. Transparency. Reliability of the books and records, if you read it. And then who is the beneficial owner? These are very, very important. And then access to information. So in the question that we saw, the last certain question, you notice that Mr. Walker has opened an account in her daughter's name. If you open an account in your daughter's name. The question is, who is the beneficial owner? Is he doing it? <clears throat> is he doing it with the aim of avoiding tax, so that he, the people will not know say it is for him, you and your daughter? For you know, daughter and cry a small girl, who has more control. So, the focus of this transparent uh, Article Twenty Six Section is that whereas we are looking at how reliable your books are. We also focus on what? 
the ownership of what? The asset. Or the owner, beneficial ownership of the information that we need. Okay, who is the owner of the bank account? And then, of course, access to bank information because the money will automatically sit in what? A bank account. Okay, so transparency is very important. You also come across confidentiality. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Article 26 is saying that we should treat it confidential. That is paragraph two. Any information received under paragraph one by a contracting state shall be treated as secret. So confidentiality also plays a major role in, in this particular. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we expect that you, the secrecy that is attached to it should be treated the same way as the local law. And if you read section seven of the Revenue Administration Act, Every information that comes to the GRS attention, they are supposed to treat it as secret. The question is whether they do it or not. Hmm? So Article 26 to emphasize the confidentiality of that information. Now, what information can we exchange? We can, ex we can exchange specific information. We can exchange spontaneous information. And we can exchange automatic or routine information. And this is what we have codified in the law. In the question that we also saw, you were asked to explain what is specific information. All of these things are in the notes to the, at the commentary. You open it now, you will see it. Because of time, we will not be able to go one by one. But Ibrahim will do a nice job for us. Ibrahim will present to us on the automatic <coughs> or the routine information. You can also exchange information on an industry-wide information, so maybe the, tele the telcos or the mining, we can exchange. And then we can also exchange tax examination, tax audit. And this is where I think if we do it, we're going to get a lot of money, especially for the multinationals. Whereas an audit is going on in Ghana, find out from another country whether the same audit is also ongoing, so that the findings that took place maybe there will be intercompany transaction that the, co the company in Ghana says, oh, we paid our parent company so much. If they paid in it and expenses, then it should automatically be an income over there. Is that not it? So spontaneous tax audit or examination is very, very key. And then we can also have tax examinations abroad. All of these things are in there. So I have explained here what is a specific information. Mm -hmm. This is where the competent authority of one country asks for particular information from the competent authority of another. So it is specific. I need this one. Okay. This, they are specific in nature. And then spontaneous is provision of information to another country states that is foreseeably relevant. Okay. Is it relevant? Spontaneous. Any question? My time is up, so I'll end here because I want us to start the other one. So, like I said, we can exchange uh, uh, automatic. We can have industry-wide information. We can have simultaneous tax audits. We can also have uh, conducting tax examinations abroad. So this one allows tax administration when requested to the extent allowable by domestic law to permit author authorized tax officials of another country to participate in the conduct of a tax examination that is being carried out here. So assuming you have tax officers in South Africa who have worked in, on a, a game, game is a South African company or shop right. They have audited South Africa, the same tax team. Then if Ghana is also auditing game here, then we invite them. Please, can you come and join us? Let's work together. After all, we have a tax treaty between us. It is for our, our, it's, it is for our mutual benefit so that if there's tax evasion, we can counter it. So, Ghana will invite them, they, they will join the team here. When they join the team here, then they will work together. Information that the company claims they have done with their South African party will be visible, it will be made known. Then, information that they also claim they did with Ghana. So it's like you are bringing two different authorities together to come and audit one multinational. And this is this this will be very very helpful. So that is the essence of exchange of information. I will end here. Any question?
You, you were talking about the marking of the question. You talked about Article 17 and that. And I think Ibrahim came in, so I think... Uh, oh, I was just... I, I said if I were you, I would have started picking my questions that I'm going to answer. That I'll be expecting on. I'll be expecting questions on president and how how I will be able to apply it. If it comes as an individual, I know I'm going to apply Article 4 2. If it comes in the form of a company, I know I'm going to apply Article 4 3. Permanent establishment, Article 5. I know Article 5, 1, 2, and 3. They are not a problem. The major problem is 4, 5, 6. So I'll master it and wait for a scenario question which involves a company, an agent, and the company is not having a, 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 an office here or the company is working with, through the web and all those things. And the auxiliary, you know, those auxiliary activities that the company normally plays, I will be watching out for those ones. If I want to look at Article 17, entertainers, then I'll look at where there is a T-shirt and there is also appearance fee and all those how to deal with those things you understand and then if it is a article 15 has to do with employment and all those things then i'm then i'm just going like that then i'm looking at exchange of information you see it, the type of information that can be exchanged the purpose why are we doing this and um, the act you see the obligations who are obliged to exchange this information then i'm putting my thoughts together then in my in that my small notebook then i'm going to look you know what this is what i'm going i'm going to answer i take article 23 elimination of double taxation at least i summarize the methods okay and which method suits what environment then i put it together so no matter how the question is asked i'll be able to know or have an idea on it and then i'll be able to answer it and get my 15 marks and go Frankly speaking, international taxation can be very stubborn. That's why I spend most time dealing with this one. I met someone at the institute who said he has written it more than seven times. But of course, the person was just reading the articles. He never even read the commentary. He doesn't even understand what is residence. He doesn't, he can't even link it to the local law. He can't link it to the nothing. He's just, but not you. I think that for you, you are well informed and you have you are you are exposed and you have known it so i'm confident that when you go you pass it once and for all provided you, you you read it okay so francis hey. um... sir good morning hey uh Aladji, where, are we getting meat this time <laughs> we are waiting for madam's uh fires when it is ready then we add the meat to it Okay, sir, hey, who is please uh, the notes. Can you reshare the note? Okay, sir, I will share it again. Okay, so I'm trying to put when was it the, the last time? Okay, sir, I'll do it. And then, Francis, can I 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 they mentioned standard um, uh, transparency and exchange of information. Uh, and so here we are combining um, what we learned about um, transparency, which is um, um, reliable books and records, the beneficiary ownership information and access to bank information. That is to talk about the transparency, right? Yes. And then here, then when you, then to talk about the exchange of information, then you are looking at the type of exchange information. Mm-hmm. Okay. What so what is the information And I think I, I gave you all, all of these things are in the commentary, but I guess summarize now we can do spontaneous specific. We can also do a tax examinations abroad and all those uh, uh, simultaneous tax examinations. The simultaneous tax examination doesn't involve the people coming here. Okay. It's yeah, what is yes. going on here. A, co a corresponding one is also going on. In the other okay. other side, on the same on the same uh, taxpayer, yeah. exactly on the same group of companies. Mo mo mind you, what, what we are doing is mostly for the multinationals. Eh? 
So let's say if MTN is being audited here, a similar audit is also being audited at the group level. So MTN will claim some deductions of expenses that they say, okay, we bought this item, we pay this, we pay this. If you did it and it's, you are claiming deduction here, then it should be an income over there. So the two competent authorities will come together for their own mutual benefit and say, you know what? Then let's work together. If there is a payment that the person in South Africa claims they paid to Ghana, we will verify it for you. We too, if they are claiming they made some payment to South Africa, you to verify it for us. Then at the end of the day, the truth will stand. Mm. I understand. Thank you. So guys, when here, let's come back in 25 minutes. I'm giving you 25 minutes. Francis, where is your note on Article 26? Come here again. Where is your note on Article 26? Notes. Yes. Summary. Yes. I reserve it for you and uh, Ibrahim to do. No, it didn't reserve anything. I've been listening to others. I know you have notes, so just share it. No, it's a notes, it's a slide I've shared with you. No, you have not. Summary of I don't have, uh, okay, I don't have one. I don't have one. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, how did you know? But on the series, I don't have I don't have one. I don't remember I've done a summary for it. So because I don't do for all. I just well, it was last sitting when they when I noticed that the trend of the question seems to be going on exchange of and last two sittings, some of the students complained that the question that came, the exchange of information act. Nine six seven. They didn't know about it, so I, I maybe I will do some notes on it. But let Ibrahim and Redeemer do that first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll proceed from there. So guys, we'll end here, and then we'll come back in twenty five minutes. I hope twenty five is enough for you to take your breakfast, and then um, hey, twenty five minutes. Okay, so let's let's make it ten thirty exactly. We'll convert again to come and continue on okay. oil and gas. And I'm not sure whether, because as we speak, there's audit pro uh, civil procedure ongoing in my class. I have missed it. And um, if next week is really going to happen this way, then I have to beg you to push the class a little ahead. Because I've missed my exams is earlier than your own. Yours is in August. It's Mine is supposed to be. Can I again? The weekday meetings. Huh? The weekday meetings we've been having. Like of late, it doesn't come on. It's only on Saturdays. And the week, yeah, it's, you see, these are all the troubles. So let's see. You. We'll, we pray for more strength and we'll, re, re, we'll re strategize, okay? okay. Re strategize. The only problem is because my own is because my own is also uh, getting closer. <laughs> oh, oh. Redeemer is telling me that it's occupational hazard. Thank you, eh? So we'll protect ourselves. So I'll push your own forward. Then now my own will come now. That's what she's telling me. All right. So let's log off and then we'll come back in. 10.30. 10.30 is 22 minutes from now. Okay. Or maybe 10.35. Can you share the slides? Okay. Don't worry. 10.35, we'll come back. Thank you. So log off and then come back at 10.35.